screening questionnaire for live attenuated intranasal influenza vaccination. For adult patients, as well as parents of children to be vaccinated. The following questions will help us determine if there is any reason we should not give you or your child live attenuated intranasal influenza vaccine or flu mist today. If you answer yes, to any question, it does not necessarily mean you or your child should not be vaccinated. It just means additional questions must be asked. If a question is not clear, please ask your health care provider to explain it. Patient name, date of birth, month, day, year. Please indicate your answer to the following questions by marking the appropriate column. For yes, mark in this column. For no, mark in this column. And for I don't know, mark in this column. 1. Is the person to be vaccinated sick today? 2. Does the person to be vaccinated have an allergy to eggs or to a component of the influenza vaccine. Three, has the person to be vaccinated ever had a serious reaction to intranasal influenza vaccine or flu mist in the past? Four, is the person to be vaccinated younger than age two years or older than age 49 years? Five, does the person to be vaccinated have a long-term health problem with heart disease? lung disease, asthma, kidney disease, neurologic or neuromuscular disease, liver disease, metabolic disease such as diabetes, or anemia or another blood disorder. Six, if the person to be vaccinated is a child aged two through four years, in the past 12 months, has a health care provider ever told you that he or she had wheezing or asthma? Seven, does the person to be vaccinated have a weakened immune system because of HIV or AIDS or another disease that affects the immune system? Long-term treatment with drugs 
such as high-dose steroids, or cancer treatment with radiation or drugs. Eight. Is the person to be vaccinated receiving antiviral medications? Nine. Is the child or teen to be vaccinated receiving aspirin therapy or aspirin containing therapy? Ten. Is the person to be vaccinated pregnant or could she become pregnant within the next month? Eleven. Has the person to be vaccinated ever had Guillain-Barre syndrome? Twelve. Does the person to be vaccinated live with or expect to have close contact with a person whose immune system is severely compromised and who must be in protective isolation, such as an isolation room of a bone marrow transplant unit. Thirteen. Has the person to be vaccinated received any other vaccinations in the past four weeks? Form completed by Date Form reviewed by Date. Information for health professionals about the screening questionnaire for intranasal influenza vaccination. Are you interested in knowing why we included a certain question on the screening questionnaire? If so, read the information below. If you want to find out even more, consult the sources listed at the bottom of this page. 1. Is the person to be vaccinated sick today? There is no evidence that acute illness reduces vaccine efficacy or increases vaccine adverse events. Persons with an acute febrile illness usually should not be vaccinated until their symptoms have improved. Minor illnesses with or without fever do not contraindicate use of influenza vaccine. Do not withhold vaccination if a person has taken antibiotics. Two, does the person to be vaccinated have an allergy to eggs or to a component of the influenza vaccine? After eating eggs or receiving any component 
of the intranasal live attenuated influenza vaccine, also known as LAIV or flu mist, history of anaphylactic reaction such as hives, wheezing, or difficulty breathing, or circulatory collapse or shock, not fainting, is usually a contraindication for further doses. Check the package insert at www.immunize.org slash package inserts for a list of vaccine components such as excipients and culture media used in the production of the vaccine or go to the website listed on the screen. Three, has the person to be vaccinated ever had a serious reaction to intranasal influenza vaccine or flu mist in the past? Patients reporting a serious reaction to a previous dose of LAIV should be asked to describe their symptoms. Immediate, presumably allergic, reactions are usually a contraindication to further vaccination with LAIV. Four, is the person to be vaccinated younger than age two years or older than age 49 years? LAIV is not licensed for use in persons younger than age 2 years or older than age 49 years. Five, does the person to be vaccinated have a long-term health problem with heart disease, lung disease, asthma, kidney disease, neurologic or neuromuscular disease, liver disease, metabolic disease such as diabetes, or anemia or another blood disorder. Persons with any of these health conditions should not be given the LAIV. Instead, they should be vaccinated with the inactivated injectable influenza vaccine. 6. If the person to be vaccinated is a child aged 2 through 4 years, in the past 12 months, has a health care provider ever told you that he or she had wheezing or asthma. LAIV is not recommended for a child this age if their parent or guardian answers yes to this question or if the child has a history of asthma or recurrent wheezing. Instead, they should be given the inactivated injectable influenza vaccine. Seven, does the person to be vaccinated have a weakened immune system because of HIV or AIDS or another disease that affects the immune system? long-term treatment with drugs such as high-dose steroids or cancer treatment with radiation or drugs.
Persons with weakened immune systems should not be given the LAIV. Instead, they should be given the inactivated injectable influenza vaccine. Eight, is the person to be vaccinated receiving antiviral medications? Receipt of certain influenza antivirals, such as amantadine, rimantadine, zanamivir, or oseltamivir, could reduce LAIV vaccine efficacy. Therefore, providers may want to defer vaccination with LAIV in persons who took these antivirals within the previous 48 hours and to advise avoiding use of these antivirals for 14 days after vaccination, if feasible. Nine, is the child or teen to be vaccinated receiving aspirin therapy or aspirin containing therapy? Because of the theoretical risk of Ray's syndrome, children and teens on aspirin therapy should not be given LAIV. Instead, they should be vaccinated with the inactivated injectable influenza vaccine. Ten. Is the person to be vaccinated pregnant or could she become pregnant within the next month? Pregnant women or women planning to become pregnant within a month should not be given LAIV. All pregnant women should, however, be vaccinated with the inactivated injectable influenza vaccine. 11. Has the person to be vaccinated ever had Guillain-Barre syndrome? It is prudent to avoid vaccinating persons who are not at high risk for severe influenza complications but who are known to have developed Guillain-Barre syndrome within six weeks after receiving a previous influenza vaccination. As an alternative, physicians might consider using influenza antiviral chemoprophylaxis for these persons. Although data are limited, for the majority of persons who have a history of GBS and who are at high risk for severe complications from influenza, the established benefits of influenza vaccination justify yearly vaccination. Twelve. Does the person to be vaccinated live with or expect to have close contact with a person whose immune system is severely compromised? and who must be in a protective isolation, such as an isolation room of a bone marrow transplant unit. Close contact with severely immunosuppressed persons 
during periods in which the immunosuppressed person requires care and protective isolation, such as in a specialized patient care area with a positive airflow relative to the corridor, high-efficiency particulate air filtration, and frequent air changes. Either the inactivated injectable influenza vaccine, or LAIV, may be used in persons who have close contact with persons having lesser degrees of immunosuppression. Thirteen, has the person to be vaccinated received any other vaccinations in the past four weeks? Persons who were given an injectable live virus vaccine, such as MMR, MMRV, varicella, or yellow fever, in the past four weeks, should wait 28 days before receiving LAIV. There is no reason to defer giving LAIV if persons were vaccinated with an inactivated vaccine. There is no reason to defer giving LAIV if they have recently received blood or other antibody-containing blood products, such as Ig.